so Donald Trump's um, is going to actually face Donald Trump. Donald Trump is going to face a filibuster um, on the affordable, uh, on, not I'm sorry, the Affordable Care Act, but on his nominee to the Supreme Court, Gorsuch. Uh, finally, finally, after floating an idea of siding with Republicans on this nominee with the hopes that Mitch McConnell would not go nuclear on the filibuster for the next nominee. Finally, Democrats have come to their senses and said that they're going to hold the line. And I say come to their senses because what, 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 what sense does it make to capitulate now for the hopes of someone not hurting you later the same way that they're free to hurt you now? It makes no sense whatsoever. It, it, is, it, is, it is cowardice. It is um, poor strategy. I, I, I was joking earlier when I said strategy, and now that shit is stuck in my head. Uh, it is a poor strategy, and it's cowardice. Um, but so maybe they, they finally found their sense. Um, uh, so uh, with Schumer, Chuck Schumer of New York has come out and said that he's not going to support um, this nominee. Um, other Democrats are coming out saying that they're not going to support this nominee to the Supreme Court. And so essentially it looks like they're going to, to filibuster. Um, now, ultimately the Republicans can go nuclear and force this, this guy through, but there's a, there's a political cost to pay for that. Right. Um, and so it, it doesn't, you know, is it, is the political cost high enough to stop them no, but when you're this, not necessarily, but when you're in a, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't situation, you don't capitulate. You, you go down fighting, right? And, and I think that's what most Americans really want from the Democratic Party at this point. You know, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. You try to negotiate with, with political terrorists, um, you know, Mitch McConnell now, and he'll just steamroll you later, right? So right now is a time for them to stand up against this Gorsuch guy. Gorsuch is problematic. I don't care how good he presents himself. He's problematic. According to Democracy Now!, they did an interview with Gorsuch's uh, college classmate, um, and the college classmate stated that Gorsuch attacked anti-apartheid and civil rights protesters and defended uh, the Contras. This, is, this is, shows you insight into who he was in his most formative years. Uh, while a student at Columbia University, uh, he attacked the university for its divestment from South Africa. Um, this was during the boycott, uh, the, the divestment movement uh, against South, uh, apartheid South Africa. And where most of the country, well, a good percentage of the universities, um, the students on the university campuses during this time found solidarity with the divestment movement. Here's Neil Gorsuch, the guy who's poised to become a Supreme Court uh, justice. He's fighting against it. And this should not come as any surprise, right? But it's just another layer of understanding the, the, the type of thinking this guy has. And of course he presents well, you know, he, of course he's, uh, of course he delivers well and he, he sits there and he looks like um, uh, the, the perfect statesman. But in reality, underneath that veneer of statesmanship uh, is a radical ideology that benefits from the status quo, right? He can sit there and be, uh, the most dignified statesman that you've ever seen. Meanwhile, his ideology is harmful to millions of people in the United States and globally. And his ideology is lifted up simply by not changing a damn thing. This is why he can afford to be an originalist. He could be afford to be a strict constitutionalist and appear dignified because he doesn't have to fight to change anything. All he has to do is fight to conserve the world as he prefers it. And the world as he prefers it, according to this interview with Democracy Now!, is a world that would not have divested from South Africa. Another decision uh, that he was involved in was... Um, that, that really shows the character uh, was his ruling on the appellate court uh, during a case with regard to a frozen truck driver. 
Um, so the case involves a lawsuit brought by uh, Alphonse Madin, um, who was a truck driver. He was riding, driving trucks for Trans Am. Um, he, he, this was while Gorsuch was on the 10th Circuit Court of Appeals in Colorado. Colorado. Um, and, and so the background of the story is this truck driver was driving, um, driving this cargo for Trans Am. Uh, the trailer broke down and was not drivable, or at least it was unsafe for him to drive. And he phoned in to headquarters uh, and let them know that I cannot drive this truck. Well, they said, we'll come out there and help you. Stay with the goods. Stay with the truck. We'll come out there and help you. Um, long story short, he waited hours and they never showed up. So ultimately, he detached the trailer, left because he was getting frostbitten, right? He was in danger personally for his own personal health. And so he left the truck so that he left the trailer so that he could go and get warm and take care of himself. Ultimately, he was fired. He was fired by Trans Am because he did not remain with the, uh, with the trailer and he did not deliver the goods. Here's the question that came to uh, Gorsuch. Uh, with regard to labor law, according to labor law, uh, the truck driver did not have to operate the truck underneath those conditions. And in fact, it's illegal to fire someone because they did not or because they refused to operate underneath dangerous situations. The initial ruling ruled in favor of the truck driver, saying that this was this was um, he had a choice between putting his life at risk uh, or driving uh, a trailer that was dangerous, which also put his life at risk. So the original ruling was in his favor. Gorsuch came back and said, no. He said, you know, he had a choice and he had a choice between stay here. It's uncomfortable, but stay here and we'll get you get there when we get there or drive this truck, um, which is illegal for you to drive because it's malfunctioning. And he said, they're both bad choices, but ultimately he did have a choice. And because he took a third choice, which was not in his realm of options, he should and could have been fired. So it, it's a little, it may be a little convoluted, but, but I want to see if I can break it down a, a little more plainly. Gorsuch said that option A is not really an option because it's illegal. It's illegal for this company to force you to drive this truck under dangerous and hazardous conditions. Option B was for you to stay in the truck. I know it's cold. I know you're getting frostbitten, but they said that they were going to come to help you. So they were giving you a solution. That was the option that you should have taken. Option C was not an option. And you took it upon yourself to leave, abandon this payload, not payload, abandon this trailer and go take care of yourself. And he actually said in a very long statement, basically saying that, you know, it may not be a Fair. It may not feel good. It may be it may not. It may have been asking too much of you, but it's not illegal. And so he overturned this decision. Trans Am actually was able to fire him without any ramifications. This shows you a clear window into his thinking, Gorsuch's thinking. However the hell you say that Gorsuch is whatever. OK, um, it shows you that he values or he has he places a higher value on the letter of the law, even when the letter of the law allows for an injustice. He places a higher value on the position of corporations, right? I think that's the most transparent thing. That's the clearest takeaway from this, that he sided on the side of corporations who didn't do what they needed to do in, the, in a timely fashion on behalf of their workers, right? So he, he sided on behalf of capital versus labor, clearly, corporations versus people, clearly, but also it's that he's willing to read the law even in, in a manner that is detrimental to the people that the law was designed to protect in the first place, or at least in the minds of Americans, we believe that these laws are here to actually help us and to further society. And this is an opportunity for Gorsuch to to actually show to us that no, no, you within the letter of the law, you were wrong, even if it meant you staying in that truck and losing a toe to frostbite. This is a dangerous ideology and it's dangerous because it protects a status quo that would rather see a man stay in his truck in freezing conditions and possibly losing his legs, and limbs and appendages because of the cold. He would rather stick to the letter of the law, even when the law causes physical harm to American citizens.
What good is a law if the law actually harms people? Not criminals, not not illegal illegals, if you want to use that phrase, not not people who are doing something illegal against the law, but people who are trying to live according to the law and just make a living. Gorsuch would rather side on the letter of the law at the expense of our safety. Again, I want to say this for a third time. This is a dangerous ideology that benefits from the appearance of simply ruling in favor of the strict interpretation of the law. It benefits the status quo. It protects the status quo. And as long as we do that, as long as we allow people to justify actually tangibly hurting Americans because they're sticking to the letter of the law instead of the spirit of the law, then we will always get people like Gorsuch who can sit there and look as though he is the most dignified statesman when in reality underneath it, he is one of the most radical and harmful or has and harbors the most radical and harmful ideology, which is harmful to so many people who fall outside the realm of protection of how this country was originally founded in the first place. I miss me every single time, miss me with anybody who comes to say that they're a strict constitutionalist uh, because all it does is protect the people that were benefited in America in the first place. White men, period. End of conversation.